Hello everybody, I just wanted to go ahead and give you a quick demo of the minivan configuration website and show you uh, kind of some tips and tricks for how to most effectively use it. So as we see here, we've got the minivan configurator. We've got our base layer and the three layers of, uh, of the default layer. At the top here, we can switch to the arrow layout and then we can switch it back to standard. Um, over here on the right, we have a scrollable column that shows all the keys available, um, but you should hopefully never have to reference that. Um, by clicking on a key, it allows you to type in a new key, but if you right click on that key, you'll get a context menu. And from that context menu, you can go ahead and select character, any character you want for that key. Um, I'm going to point out some really cool ones. Um, it looks like it's getting cut off here on my uh, recording. But at the bottom, there's uh, an LED key, which we can see right here. And that maps to toggling the LEDs on and off. Um, in here, we have the normal keys. We have toggle, which is any layer that you want. And um, when you press it, it'll switch to that layer. When you press it again, it'll switch it back off. Momentary, we have the same options here again, layers one through seven. Um, momentary, you have to hold, and while it's held down, that layer will be active when you let go of the function key. Um, it will become inactive again. And then finally, tap keys. Now these are really cool. Um, you can take a key and set it to be any of the available keys. So let's say we want it to be G like we have but if I hold it, we can turn it into a modifier or a function key. So we could turn G into layer one when held and then uh, G otherwise. Um, yeah, so by simply right clicking, you can reconfigure the board completely. When you're done configuring your, your layout, Maybe we want to switch space and enter. That's pretty easy to do. Then uh, I'm going to leave these layers alone. But you can make your changes anywhere, honestly. Like Also, there is uh, shifted characters that are available under the normal character selection. And uh, these use one of the advanced firmware features, but it extracts all of the configuration of it behind the scenes so that you can use these characters on, like, say, a function layer like I have here. And you don't have to hit function one shift. You can just hit function plus the key where you want, want that shifted character. But when you've got your layer all configured, you just hit make hex. Wait for it to build. The firmware downloads. So now we have our hex file. And then we go to uh, the programming guide, which then has directions for how to flash the keyboard. So stage one is building the firmware. And you can use the firmware builder online that I just showed you, or you can actually modify the source code and recompile it yourself. And that's step one through four here. Now you can skip those if you've used the online website. You don't need to use step one through four. That's only if you want to get in and configure, you know, something that maybe isn't supported from the front end website. But I've tried to add support for as many things on the website as possible is to make it so that you shouldn't ever have to get into the source code. So we're going to go down to the flash section. Um, flash in the keyboard, we need to install a bootloader. If you're on Windows, there's the flip bootloader, which you download from Atmel's website. Um, I've got some instructions for installing the driver and setting that up. On Mac and Linux, um, you can also use this on Windows. Uh, it's called DFU Programmer. Um, 
there's some different resources here for getting that set up. Um, then there's some instructions here how to use flip if you're on Windows and the commands for Mac and Linux. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and program my keyboard really quick. back up so now I can switch back over here we got my keys working I'll show you typically this key here would be space right now it's enter as you can see and space is over here so we can see that that's um, matches the firmware that we downloaded 